He who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. I will write the name of the Father and New Jerusalem on him and my new name. And I will grant to sit with me in my throne. Guys, what we're talking about here is the promise the Lord Jesus Christ gave us in Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. He said, he who overcomes, I'll make a pillar in the temple. Now, where we're going to go over, guys, is the pillars in the temple. If any of you are familiar with this, or pillars in the temple, what you may be familiar with is the uh, two pillars that are called Jachin and Boaz. And uh, I wanted to fit that in this video, but it's I have too much content, so I'm going to do this in one video, and I'm going to do part two, which will be exciting. The two witnesses, the two pillars, Jachin and Boaz. But there's other pillars in the temple. Now, where we find these is in the first temple that Solomon built, okay? Um, and there's uh, various rooms that have various names with with pillars in them, all right? So what we're talking about here is the pillars in the first temple represent people. And the way that Solomon um, was instructed to build this was to build um, a room with pillars that had the throne. And that's what this is all about, the Lord's throne. Now, the uh, thing that he, he um, the name that's listed in 1 Kings chapter 7 is the house of the forest of Lebanon. So what he did is he took cedars of Lebanon, very, very famous cedars of Lebanon, and they were the pillars in this um, facility. Now, it's not the actual temple, guys. This is a different building, all right? Um, but we find this 1 Kings 7, 2, the house of the forest of Lebanon, the length is 100 cubits, the width is 50 cubits, the height is 30 cubits, okay? So we've depicted that here, and basically we're talking about uh, this section, which is 100 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and its height is 30 cubits. So we're looking straight down at this, okay? Um, and if we uh, observe this pattern, 100 cubits by 50 by 30 is similar to Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark is 300 cubits by 50 cubits by 30 cubits high. So it's a third of the Ark of Noah's Ark. It's actually also in proportion to the Ark of the Covenant as well, because we're going to look, there's another section called the Porch of the Pillars, and that's right here. And that's 30 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Now, if you were to divide that by the Holy of Holies is 20 by 20 cubits, you would come up with, um, you might be able to see it here, 50 cubits by 30 cubits divided by 20 is 2.5 by 1.5 cubits. And that is the Ark of the Covenant. So what we have, interesting enough, is we have a section that's proportional to Noah's Ark. And then we have another section which is proportional to the Ark of the Covenant. So these are all before the Lord's throne, and his throne is here. Okay. Now, in 1 Kings 7, 2, it gives us some instruction about this, um, this building. Okay. And it says, upon four rows, and you can see we've, we've uh, got four rows here of cedar pillars covered with cedar above the beans on now it says covered with cedar above the beans on 45 pillars and then it says 15 pillars in a row now 15 pillars in a row is what we have here and there says there's four rows but it's talking about 45 pillars now this takes a little bit of interpretation because we're trying to understand what this is, because also in, in 1 Kings 7, it tells us that there's windows. So like during the walls, it says there's rows of windows. Now windows would be an indication of walls, okay? Um, but what I believe this is saying, guys, is that it's making a distinction of 45 pillars. So that would be taking out, you know, like one row, and then you would only have... Uh, two rows. Now, if you did this, there would be some kind of feature or something on these beams on these 45 pillars, but not on these 15 because these are in rows. So you got 5, 10, 15. Now, interesting enough, guys, what I believe this is, is, is in this room, 
is what I believe is just like Solomon's porch. Okay, now let me explain. What I believe this is saying is that there, some of the pillars are open like this. You see how there's, there's pillars here. One, two, three. Now these two, I'm going to do part two. Isn't this amazing? These two pillars, Jachin and Boaz. But what I believe um, Solomon's porch is, guys, is there's a section of it that's open. Okay? One section. And that would be the 15 pillars. Okay? Then there's other sections that are with windows. And you can see we've got windows here. Windows here, windows here, windows here. Now this wall doesn't have windows, but it would be uh, like an enclosure like this with windows, okay? And then there would be pillars inside, just like we have here, okay? See, we got a uh, pillar here and pillar here. Now these would be inside the building, guys. There would be 45 pillars like, like this, okay? Just like this that would be enclosed, and then we'd have windows on... Uh, three of the walls. Okay, so window, 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 uh, windows here, and then open. Okay, so then just like this room I'm in, amazingly enough, it's got pillars and it's open on one side. That's what I believe we're looking at with Solomon's porch. Now, the way I've drawn it, I've drawn a wall here, um, but I believe what it's saying is that these pillars are actually outside or exposed, okay, if you will. So, isn't that amazing? This room is just like this. So what I'm getting at is it takes a little bit of interpretation to understand this, um, what it's seeing here, okay, with this room, the House of Forest of Lebanon, okay? We're going to talk about these 60 pillars in a moment. But guys, all of the ancient world, I've been studying the uh, ancients, especially the uh, Persian Empire, the Medo Persians, and they all, after Solomon, they all copied this. They all made a throne room, uh, especially Cyrus made a room like this. He had a throne in it, and then he had a hundred pillars. And it's also in Syria and many other places. They all copied Solomon. But what it's about is this is all about the throne. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to reign in Jerusalem on the judgment seat of Christ. You know, before, some of you think that he's coming in New Jerusalem. No, we got Ezekiel's temple first. So his throne is going to come first, and then after a thousand years is New Jerusalem. All right? But what we're talking about here is we're talking about these rooms. We're talking about these pillars. Okay? Now, the first thing that we're going over is the instructions in the first temple. Okay? So, in the first temple... It doesn't say in 1 Kings 7, it doesn't say how many pillars are in this section. It's called the porch of the pillars. It gives us the length. And, and what it says is that attached to it is a porch for the throne, a porch for judgment. Okay, That's what we have here is the throne. Now, we don't actually, there's something here. It's covered, but it doesn't give us the measurements. Okay, And I didn't want to just make something up. So I'm just leaving that as the throne. So what you would have is you have all these pillars before the throne. Let's remember these pillars and what we're looking at in this building represent people. It's important we rem remember that as we go throughout this because these are promises to people. They were, he said, he who overcomes, I'll make a pillar. Okay, so these will be people sitting in judgment with the Lord. Okay, as it says, He overcomes, I'll make a pillar in the temple of my God. I will write upon Him the Father's name, New Jerusalem. Now, what I believe is that in this section, the porch of the pillars is 12 pillars because we are continuing the pattern in rows of four. And you can also see proportionally that just as the number of pillars that are inside here, okay, if we continue that, proportionally there would also be additional uh, 12 that would fit perfectly within the 30 uh, cubits of this space, okay? Um, and we're going to go through the number 12. But New Jerusalem is all about 12, okay? So that's why we're saying this section of the Porch of the Pillars is New Jerusalem. He said, I will also write upon you my new name, and I will grant to sit with me in my throne. You can see the relationship. We're going to talk about the relationship of the pillars, 
or these people, and his throne, because these pillars also represent seats or thrones, okay? And these people will sit in judgment with the Lord. Okay, now, we also find the 12 pillars with um, Moses. Moses built, built an altar um, around Mount Sinai, and he made 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of children of Israel. This is the same pattern that we have in New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is also 12, and we have 12 pillars here in the porch of pillars, all right? Um, as well, when it talks about this throne, the king made a great throne. This is Solomon. A great throne of ivory. And with that, there were 12 lions. All right. Now, this great throne of ivory that Solomon built, okay. Now, this is very, very significant. Please, please understand this. There's a great throne of ivory. This represents the great white throne. Okay. In Revelation 20, verse 11, uh, there's a, John saw a great white throne. And then it sat upon it. Um, judgment was given. Okay, that's what we're calling this. This is the judgment seat of Christ. That's what this throne is. Solomon built a throne. It was a great white throne made of ivory, covered with gold. That is the same thing we see in Revelation 20, 11. So I'm showing you this pattern and structure of the throne and its relationship with pillars. We see this also in Job 26. He holds back the face of his throne uh, spreading uh, by a spreading cloud, okay, and the pillars of heaven trembled. Okay, this is talking about God's throne, obviously, and the pillars of heaven represent seats. And the pillars of heaven would be angels, but also the pattern is with people, his elect. So, if you don't know about these numbers, you, uh, I strongly encourage you to watch the man child. It's a playlist. These you can see these numbers: sixty and twelve is seventy-two. Seventy-two is the number of the elders and judgment. Okay. Uh, several, many, many, many amazing things here. I don't have the time to get into, but I've covered before. Okay. So um, these are astonished at his reproof. Why? These pillars of heaven. This is what the Lord Jesus is going to set up, and He's going to have people that are in that are represented by these pillars. And he said in Luke 22, You which have continued with me in my temptations, I will appoint to you a kingdom, as my father has appointed to me, and you will eat and drink at my table. The other thing about this, um, this structure, guys, is there's a couple other things that are associated with it. One of them is the vessels to drink wine. Uh, you may remember when uh, the... Uh, the vessels were taken to Babylon and the um, Belshazzar was drinking from them, okay? Those were in this uh, place. Those, those vessels were in here, all right? And the other thing is shields. There were shields, that many shields were on the walls, okay? But that's within this, uh, this building, of the, forest, the house of the forest of Lebanon, okay? But he said, you will eat and drink at my table and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, again, we have the 12 thrones, and these would represent either, uh, you know, other people or, and also the 12 apostles. Okay, so there we've covered, and we've talked about this section here, the 12 pillars, New Jerusalem, 12 tribes. Then we have this section, which we talked about, 60 pillars. Now, these, again, represent people, and we uh, can find this. Uh, in a few places. One of them I'm going to get into in another video as well um, is in Jeremiah 52:25. It says, 60 men of the land of the middle of the city. As well in uh, Song of Solomon 3, 7, Solomon's 60 valiant men. They have swords by their side, okay? These are his uh, mighty warriors. And then it talks about his chariot of wood of Lebanon, okay? That's exactly what um, this is called, the house of the forest of Lebanon, okay? And as well, it says here, he made pillars of silver. And then he says, go forth, daughters of Zion. Behold, King Solomon with his crown. <laughs> That's what I'm saying to those of you that are the daughters of Zion. Go forth, behold your king with the crown. He is crowned. He is king of kings, lord of lords. He's seated on the throne. So guys, if you're not familiar... Please watch The Man Child. Uh, it's a playlist. I'll put a link in the description field. As well, please watch The King Sits Upon the Throne. Glory to his name. I have so many videos on this. It's all about the king. Glory to his name. 
All right, and these are the great honors that he gives to the man child, to the elect. All right, and um, let's keep going here uh, about the 60 in Ezekiel 40 14. Um, in Ezekiel 40 through 48 is Ezekiel's temple that will be built. Um, in it, guys, I don't necessarily see something like this um, described. That doesn't mean it's not there, uh, but the only thing is it talks about these high posts. Uh, these posts are 60 cubits high. So again, we have this number 60. That's why I'm going over the pattern of 60 here. Uh, the posts of the court around the gate. Now these 60, as well, I talked to you about before, is part of Cyrus' decree. In Cyrus' decree, he said um, to make a structure that's 60 cubits by 60 cubits, okay? Now this that's the temple. And when we get into part two, we're going to talk about the two pillars of Jachin and Boaz, the two major pillars which represent the two witnesses. But we're talking about the king. The king sits upon the throne, and I hope that um, you get this part. The next thing we're talking about is in the, the, this is when Solomon made the temple, guys, that was the first temple. Then it was destroyed. Then there was a second temple. That's Ezra and Nehemiah. When they made it in the second temple time at the Lord Jesus Christ, it was called Solomon's Porch. And something very significant happens in John 10, 22. Um, Jesus walks into Solomon's porch in Jerusalem during the Feast of Dedication, which is Hanukkah. Okay, let me just say that again. Jesus walked into Solomon's porch. Okay, so there's a porch. And we know that this porch is associated with the throne, right? So he walks into Solomon's porch during the Feast of Hanukkah. Okay, the feast of dedication. If you understand Cyrus's decree, it happens on the 24th day of the ninth month. The following day is Hanukkah, the first day of Hanukkah. So what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing in the time of John uh, 10, 22, is he's going into Solomon's porch. He's going into his own throne. And this is the one place throughout all the Gospels he said, I am the Son of God. So he's symbolically going through that porch because he's the king of kings. It's his throne. <laughs> and he's walking through the porch. He's walking through the pillars on the Feast of Dedication, which is the 24th day and ninth month in Haggai. Again, I, I will put links in the description field for these things. But guys, that's what I told you. I told you Cyrus's decree was the 24th day of the ninth month. And on the precise day, first day of Hanukkah, Donald Trump does the... Uh, moving of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. <laughs> and the whole world's an uproar. But prophecy is being fulfilled. Glory to his name. Now, uh, that's what it is, the symbolism. Uh, during Hanukkah, I was, I've been studying all this. I can't wait to share it with you. But, uh, but that's what it is. Jesus Christ walking through Solomon's porch, which is his own throne, on the Feast of Dedication, saying, I am the Son of God. As well, guys, um, and in Enoch 90, verse 28, um, let me, uh, I'm going to actually bring this up here on the tablet and read it. What I have to do, guys, is I consolidate all my notes here, and I really encourage you to get this. Um, and that way you can uh, study this because I, I have to do these videos so quickly. But Enoch, uh, let's see, where is it? Enoch 90, verse 28, and I stood to see, then they folded up the old house. And carry off all the pillars and the beams and the ornaments of the house they, that were in the same time folded up with it. And they carried it off and laid it in a place to the south of the land. Now what he's talking about here, amazingly, is in Enoch, in 90, uh, Enoch 90 is talking about the third temple that's going to be built. Okay, And it's going to be built. And it's going to be broken down and taken away. And I saw till the Lord of the sheep brought a new house, greater and loftier than the first. So this is talking about Ezekiel's temple. And that's what I'm saying. He's going to build another temple. He's going to have pillars in the temple, people ruling and reigning with him. Uh, set up in the place which is far and folded up, and all the pillars were new. So there are going to be pillars. There are going to be um, things in it. I'm not sure if it's exactly like this or whatever. Ezekiel doesn't tell us as much. But there will be pillars in it, and its ornaments are new and larger than the first. And the old one was taken away, and all the sheep were in it. So that means that all the sheep and God's people will be in, a, in this temple, in this facility, serving and worshiping the Lord. Amazing. Enoch talks about this. So guys, there we have it. The house of the forest of Lebanon. This is the, these are the pillars in the temple. This is Solomon's 
porch, okay? And these are people that will get the honor that the Lord Jesus Christ promised and to the seven churches, Revelation 3, that will, he will make them a pillar in the temple. Now, the only ones we haven't covered in this video will be on uh, Jachin and Boaz, the main two pillars. It talks about those in Ezekiel's temple. But guys, glory to God. I rejoice in the day to see these uh, these these people honored. There's going to be rewards. He said, behold, my reward is with me. Now, um... I want to I want to actually read just a couple things before I conclude. In Jeremiah one eighteen, before um, it says, "For behold, I have made this day of I have made you this day a defense city, an iron pillar, brazen walls against the whole land and against the kings of Judah, and they shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail, for I am with you," says the Lord. I also want to 